Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to create a robot arm and then add artificial intelligence to it. We will first 3D print all the parts and then assemble the arm. Then we will use computer vision to track our hand and replicate that on the arm. And all of this will be done with just 20 lines of Python code. That's right, with our new CV Zone library, building robotics and computer vision applications has become very convenient. If you would like to create real-world computer vision apps, do check out my premium course in which we learn how to create apps such as object detection, augmented reality, document scanner, and a lot more. The link is in the description below. So without further ado, let's get started. So the robot arm we are using today is by the InMove project. This is the InMove robot. As you can see, this is the website InMove.fr. And this is designed by a French designer by the name Gaël Lagawin. So he designed this and he open sourced this for everyone to use. So thanks to him. And we can see that he has listed everything down to make it easy for everyone to use. So here you can go to build yours, build your index. And here you can see finger starter, hand arm and forearm, bicep, shoulder and so on. So we will go to hand and forearm. And here you are going to find all the steps to actually create this. And you can also find all the 3D printed files uh, within this website as well. And if you don't want to go through all of this, do check out his shop as well. And there he's also selling this arm if you want to purchase that. So at least he's selling the, the hand rather than the arm. I believe there was arm at some point as well. I'm not sure. Uh, but anyways, you can get a cheap printer and you can print it yourself. Uh, nowadays, printers are very, very cheap and you can easily use them right out of the box. So we are going to build this. Now I printed this almost one year back. So I will show you all the process of how I did this. And then later on, we are going to look at the electronics and then we will go on to the coding part.
So let's start by understanding the concept of our serial communication. So the idea is fairly simple. We are simply going to send zeros and ones based on which finger is open and which finger is closed. So whenever a finger is open, we are going to send one. So as you can see here, and whenever it is closed, we are going to send zero. So the string that we will send from our Python code will be zero, 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 zero and then it will have a dollar sign in front of it. 
So at the starting, it will be a dollar sign, and then you have these five digits corresponding to whether each finger is open or closed. So if, for example, pinky is closed, it will be zero. If it's open, it will be one. Now, in our previous project, the last time we did this, so earlier we had the issue that if we open any finger, we cannot tell which finger is open, we just open one finger, the index finger, and that's it. So in this, in this scenario, we are not going to do that. For each individual case, we are going to open and close. So you can literally make any sign or anything uh, with your hand, and it will represent that exact same gesture with the, the, with the robot arm. So this is a kind of an upgrade and it is much faster than what we did before. So this is basically the serial communication idea. So what we will do is we will open up our Arduino and here, let me make it a little bit bigger so you can see better. So here we are going to first of all save this. So we will write here robot arm uh, finger counter gesture whatever you want to write you can write here and we will save it now first of all we are going to include uh, or let's do the serial part first then we can go on to the servo part so first of all we are going to write here integer values receive so whatever values we receive we are going to put them in an array and this array will be the number of values received so we are making it a variable so that if you wanted to use it in other projects you can do that too now in order to use a variable like this within an array uh, in the definition we will have to define here define number of vals receive why is this v small we are using camel casing so we will use it like that okay so this is the idea so then we can put the value here that for example in this case we are receiving five values okay and then we also need to define one more thing which is the digits per value received now the good thing about this code is that you can use it later on as well for other projects. So for example, if you are receiving, uh, let's say a value from the analog sensor, which has a range from zero to 1000, then you can have four digits. So here, instead of one, you can just write four. And let's say you have three sensors connected. You can write here, we are receiving three values from three different sensors. So it makes it very easy to work with different projects. That's why we are writing it like this. But here for now, we are going to use five and one. Okay, so once that is done, we are going to define our string length. So our string length, basically what we are referring to is that dollar, then we have zero, 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 zero. So this is our string length, which is zero, one, two, three, four, five. So how can we do that? we can simply calculate it because we have the number of uh, values receiving and we have the digits per value. So we can simply calculate it. So we can write here integer string length is equals to number of values received multiplied by digits per val value or val received plus one so here basically we are saying we multiply this with this and that will give us all these which will be five but then we also have a dollar sign so we will add plus one so this is what we are doing so far so very simple very easy let's put it here there you go then we are going to initialize a counter this counter will be used to actually see or iterate through all these different uh, characters. So we will be using that later on. And then we will also initialize a flag, which will be counter start, and we will keep it as false. So whenever we receive the dollar sign, this dollar sign, 
we will start our counter. So that's the idea. And once we start the counter, we are going to keep adding to our counter. We will do plus plus and that will keep adding to our counter and we will know uh, we have to go till this string length. That's why we are using the string length as well. Okay, then we will add a string. This string will be received string. So when we receive the string, basically what we are doing is we are collecting it all together and then we will break it down into substrings. And these substrings we are going to store in our value received. So it might be a little bit confusing at this point, but don't worry, when we go ahead, I will explain every step. Okay, then in the void setup, do we need to initialize anything for the serial? Yes, we need to write serial.begin, serial.begin, and we have to write the baud rates, 9600, and then what else? Then for now, we don't need to do anything else here. And then we can skip the loop for now. Later on, we can use it. Here, we are going to create a new function. We do not uh, intend to output anything or return anything, so we will write void. We will write here, receive data. Uh, I believe I wrote the spelling here wrong. Receive the string. Okay, did I write anything else wrong? Um, not so far, hopefully. Okay, so then we will add our brackets to start and end. And then we are going to write while, while serial dot available, available, then we are going to go ahead. Okay, so we will write pretty much everything here inside this. Okay, so what is the next step? The next step is to read the character. So the the data that is coming from uh, the Python script is not actually as a complete string. It will come character by character. So we need to read each character. So we will write here character C is equals to serial dot read. And we are going to read this character. Then we need to check if our character is dollar. So this is the character we are looking for. So we need to check here that if the character is equals to dollars, then we are going to say counter. Did I put a bracket? Because we have a lot of brackets. Uh, it can get confusing very easily. So here we will write counter starts is equals to true. So now this counter will start and then we need to check if counter start, uh, this basically means is equals to true. We don't need to write that. Uh, if we just leave it like that, it means the same thing. And then, then we are going to check if we have reached our string length. So we will write here if counter is less than our string length, then we are going to count, right? So we will do the count plus plus and all of that. Actually, let's put them together. We can format that later. Okay. So basically what we are saying is as long as we have not reached till the end, keep counting one by one. And each time we are going to get this string and we will add it to this string. Uh, sorry, this character we will add to this string. Okay, the spelling here is wrong. S-T-R-I-N-G. Okay. So what we will do is we will write here that our received string, our received string is equals to string received string plus C. So what does that mean? That means that whatever our received string was earlier, so earlier it is nothing, so it is empty. 
So we will add our string to it, our character to it that we received just now. So it could be dollar sign, uh, it could be the zero or one, whatever it is, we will add to it. And then to make sure it is string, we will write here string. So that is the main idea. And then we need to add to our counter. So we will say counter plus plus. So this will add to the counter and it will keep iterating. So this is as long as this statement is not reached. So then we can write here that if our counter is greater than or equal to string length, then we are going to actually store our values in, where is it? In the values received. So this, we will store it in this array. So here we are going to write. So how do we actually put it in this array? Let me explain. We can write here values received, let's say at zero, is equals to our received string, received string dot substring. So we can write substring and then this is basically a function or you can say a method that we can use to actually split our string. So right now, at this point, our received string is basically this. And what we need to do is we need to go ahead and split it one by one, like this. So we will give it some values. So we are going to say that, for example, start from zero and go till one. So we can say it like this. And then what we will do is because these are numbers, we can put dot to int because later on we are going to use these values to send the command to the servo. So we need it in integer rather than string. So we can write it like this. But the problem here is that I will have to copy this and I will have to paste it uh, five times because we have five values that we want to receive, right? So I will have to paste this five times and then I will just change this value to one, two, and so on. And I will change these numbers to one and uh, two and so on. But there are two problems here. One is that let's say I have more than five values. Then what? Then I will put more that is uh, not a good way to do this. That is kind of hard coding. So what we can do is we can use a for loop. So the for loop will loop as many times as we have the values. And the second thing is we need to update these values. So the problem here is that not every time we will have one digit per value. So here we have one digit per value. But later on we might have two, we might have three. So again, we cannot hard code any values here. So we will use the digits per value here as well. So we can remove all of this and we can write here that for integer i is equals to zero, we are going to write i is less than number, number of values received and then we will do i plus um, plus. So while it is less than this value, keep adding to our loop. And then what we will do is, we are going to create here a number. So we are going to call this integer number is equals to i multiplied by digit per digits per value received plus one. So this is basically our number. So the plus one is basically because we have our first digit as dollar. So we don't want to use that. So we are writing plus one here. Then we are multiplying the digits per value with i. So for example, if we have uh, the digit one then it will multiply this with one. If we have digit zero, it will multiply it with zero, it will become zero. 
So in our first case, when it should be zero, this value should be zero, this value should be one, right? So what can we do? So here we can simply write this number. Number, and then we can write digits per value. We can write here number plus digits per value. Okay, so this might be a little bit confusing. Uh, let me explain it. Let me zoom out a little bit. Okay, let me explain what, what's happening. So if I want my first, if I want my very first string, I will write here one and two. If I want the second one, I will write here two and three. Because the first one is the, the very first one is the dollar. So actually I pasted here as well. So the very first one is the dollar, so we don't need that. So we are starting from one instead of zero. So we are saying one, two, two. So this is basically the idea. So if we look at this equation, this will satisfy these conditions. So here you can see that we have number. So number here, if it is zero, then zero multiplied by digits per value, it will be zero plus one, it will become one. So this is one. Then the second one is, it's already one plus digits per value is one. So it will become two. Then if we go to the second iteration, this will become one. So here, this will be one multiplied by one, which is one plus one. So this will become two. So here we are putting two and then two plus one, which is digits per value becomes three. Now, it is very easy to do plus one each time because in this particular case, it is just digits per value is one. But if we had more values for digits per value, then this will become very easy to use. So this is why we have written it like this. I hope that was easy to understand. And then we can simply replace this with I. So hopefully we have not made any mistakes so far. So this will store all these values in our values received. And then we can use this value received for um, sending the commands to the servo. But then we need to refresh or reset our uh, values for the second time it sends the string. So we need to write here that our received string is equals to empty. And then we are going to say counter is equals to zero. And then we will say counter, uh, what was it? Start, counter start is equals to false. So this will basically reset all the settings so that next time we can do all of this again. Okay, let's actually compile this because probably there will be some mistakes. Okay. So C is equals to dollar, you have to put it like this. What else? Okay, so that was the only mistake, hopefully. Okay, so what else can we do? Now, what we will do is, once we get this value, we have to, uh, what do you call, send it to the servo. So, we will go up and we are going to write here that we want to include, include servo.h. And then we are going to define, or do we need anything else? Okay, we don't need anything else here. Then we are going to create objects. So basically we have our servo class, and from this class we are creating objects. So each servo will have its own object. So we are going to write servo thumb. Then uh, let's copy this because we are lazy. What happened there? Too many spaces. Okay. Then here we are going to write thumb and then index and then middle and then what is it? Ring then pinky okay so this is basically our initialization then what do we need next um, we need to define 
all of these in our void setup. So we need to define which pin number is connected to which motor. So what I have done, I have connected it in a very weird way. I just randomly connected it and then I tested each of these servos, uh, which one was connected right uh, based on trial and error. So for the thumb, we will write attach and it is attached to pin number seven. Then we have, let's paste that again. It is pasting very weird. Let's remove that. There you go. Actually, we can go to tools and auto format. That will auto format everything. Actually, it's not looking bad. Okay, then we have 9, 11, and 8, and 10. Okay, and then we have index, index, middle, then we have ring, and we have pinky. Okay, that is good. So let's save that and let's move on. Now, the, the last part is very, very easy. So all we have to do if we if we did not make any mistakes all we have to do is we have to first receive the data so we will write here we will call our function receive data and after we receive the data we are going to send the commands to our motors so we will write if the values received at number 0 is equals to 1 which means open it up then we will write servo thumb dot write. We are going to send the command as 180. So we will rotate in one direction. Else, else we are going to write servo thumb dot write zero. I'm writing it in one line because it's easier to read that way. You will see now. Uh, we can just simply copy this and we can paste it multiple times and yeah so that makes it very easy to read what is happening you could write it in separate lines as well so here I can just replace this with one two three and four and then we need to replace these with our other values so we will write here index I should be capital then we are going to write here index and then we will write here middle servo middle we'll write here middle ring ring and then pinky Okay, so that actually looks good to me. Let's compile and see if we made any mistakes. Of course, THUMB. What else? Oh, it's working. That's great. So, hopefully it will work now. So, before we go into our what do you call a python script we are going to test it here so how can you test it here basically you can open the serial monitor up and as you can see uh, you can hear the voice already what you can do is you can write here the signal and then you can send this command and see if it works so what i'm going to do is i'm going to record the hand and record this at the same time so you can see how exactly does it behave? So let's try this out. I'm going to add zero for all of them and see if anything happens. So nothing so far. Then we are going to write dollar. Then we will put all of them on. So we'll put five ones. And there you go. So all of them open up. And then we are going to try one of them to close. So what we will do is we will put 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. 
So there you go. Then we can put, we can put, let's say one, zero, one, one, one. There you go. So now you can see that when I send the command, it actually behaves as we expect it to. So there you go. So all of them off, and then we can send all of them on. So this is basically the idea. Now what we can do is we can go onto our Python script and we can uh, send this string from Python instead of writing it manually. So here we are in our PyCharm project and what we will do is we will create the code to actually send the command to our Arduino board. Now the commands will be sent based on the gesture part so we will also look at hand gestures. So we will look at how many fingers are up at any given point. And based on that, we will send the commands to the Arduino board. So uh, what we can do is we will be using media pipe library to actually uh, track the gestures. But the thing is that we have created a module out of this and we have packaged it together in one simple, uh, what do you call package? And you can install that by going to the project and you can add and here you can write CV zone and you can simply install this. So this uh, includes the serial communication part as well and it also includes uh, the hand tracking part. So all we have to do is we have to call these uh, methods and then we can make use of them. And this will install the open CV and the media pipe library by default but it will not install the serial part. So what we have to do is we have to search for serial. Now the serial by default did not work for me. So I tried serial device and that worked fine. So now both the packages have been installed and you can see that we are in a Python file called gesture control arm. So we are going to import here CV zone and then we will import cv2 then we will write cap is equals to cv2 dot video capture and we are going to say that our id number is one so you will probably use zero and then we will write cap dot set and we are going to set it or do we need we can skip this if we don't want to give it any size by default the camera i'm using is 640 by 480 so that should be fine then we need to uh, write the while loop so while true we are going to say the success and the image is equals to cap dot read so this will read the frame and then we will simply write cv2 dot im show and we are going to show the image image and then we will say img and what else cv2 dot wait key wait key and we will put one so this should run smoothly let's try it out there you go so as you can see uh, here is my hand and you can see that it is working fine so now we will add the hand tracking part so this functionality is provided by media pipe library uh, now, Media Pipe Library is already installed because we installed CV Zone. And within CV Zone, we have a module that makes it easier for us to get the values from the Media Pipe Library. So it's like a wrapper. So here we can write detector is equals to CV Zone dot hand detector. And if you want, you can give in some parameters. Uh, like the maximum number of hands. So actually we should give the maximum number of hands as one and the detection value, you can decide the detection confidence can be anything by default, it's 0 0.5. So then we are going to find our hands and we can simply use this object that we just created. We can write here detector dot find hands and we will give in our image and it will return us with the image with the output drawn so we can grab that 
Then we are going to find the position of our hand. Uh, by position, we mean the landmarks. So we will write here detector dot find positions. And then we are going to give in our image. And we will also take in return, we will take the LM list and we will also take the bounding box. So that should give us some detail. And then again, we can print this out. So let's try it. So here is the image. And if I put my hand in, you can see that uh, we have some tracking and we can see that we also have the bounding box. Next, we are going to check how many fingers are up. And again, this is very easy with our package. So we can simply write if LM list. So if there is something available, then we are going to say that detector dot fingers up. This will tell us how many fingers are up and we can simply write here fingers so that we store it in the list fingers. So let's print this out. We will write here fingers. There you go. So let's run that. So right now you can see all of the fingers are up. And if I put all of them down, you get zero, then one, two, three, four, and five. So all of them are working fine. So, and this, the best part here is that this is the exact same format that we used in Arduino. So all we have to do is we have to send this fingers list to our Arduino, and that should work by default seamlessly. So how can we do that? To do this, we have the serial module within the CV zone package. So it allows us to communicate with Arduino. So in order to use this, the first thing we will do is to create a serial object. We will call it my serial. And we will write here that CV zone dot serial object. And now we have to give in the configurations. So as we saw earlier, we are using COM3, the port number. And then we have to give in the baud rate we selected as 9600. And then we have to decide how many digits are we sending per value. So in our case, we are only sending one and zero. So it needs only one digit to tell whether it's one or zero. So we will write here one. So if you're uh, doing something else, you have another project, uh, definitely you will have to check how many values you are sending. And based on that, you can change this value. So once we declare this, now all we have to do is we have to send the data. So we will write here my serial dot send data. And here we are going to send our data. Now, this is the easiest part where we just write fingers and it should work by default. So all we are doing is we are getting the values from our detector and we are simply inputting it to our send data for our serial object. And let's see if it works. So we are going to remove this. And what happens is that if it connects properly, it will first tell us whether it connected or not. So here I have COM3. So if I run this now, it should not connect because I did not connect it yet. So it says here device not connected. So now I'm going to plug in the robot arm and let's see if it detects or not. Okay, so now the device is connected and let's run it again. So now as you can hear, there is some movement. So let's try it out. Here you can see I'm recording. So let's see how it works. There you go. So now the command is sent and you can see here it says device connected. So it means it is connected properly. So when I bring my hand, it goes up. Now, if I put one of them down, it goes down two, three, four, and five. And then one, two, three, four, and five. And this is pretty amazing. 
be Spider-Man. Uh, let's try victory. This is the victory sign. So as you saw that, it is quite complicated task, but you can see that it is very easy to do with these two libraries that we have imported. And of course, at the back end, we are using the media pipe library that is provided by Google. So all of the heavy lifting is done by the media pipe library. So this is it for today's video. I hope you have learned something new. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to share and subscribe and do check out our new platform, the CV Zone. And I will see you in the next one.